Um, we're very excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Mark Rogers, but feel free to continue enjoying your food while he speaks. Um, Mark graduated from BHP in 2007 with majors in business honors, finance, and Spanish. Um, during his time at UT, he was highly active in Texas Blazers, at international case competitions in Bangkok and Los Angeles, um, and he served as the Master of Ceremonies for the university's largest talent show. Post-graduation, Mark started out his career in investment banking at Morgan Stanley in London, then became a quality assurance manager at Deshaque Gourmet and Courts. Mark now works as a math and IB international, or which stands for International Baccalaureate, theory of knowledge teacher at a charter school he helped to open in 2011. And after having been paired with him through the BHP Alumni Mentor Network, I can tell you firsthand how lucky his students are to have him teach, support, and inspire them each day. Office Depot agrees with me as they have recently named him a Teachers Change Lives featured educator. He is one of the most genuine, driven, and innovative people I've ever had the privilege of learning from. We're so honored to have him speaking for you today. Please join us in welcoming award-winning teacher and BHP alum, Mark Rogers. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Yeah? It's like kind of an early morning and now you're eating and now your blood has moved down into your stomach and into your small intestine, away from your brain. Yeah. No, that's, that, that's good, that's good. So uh, you, you know now that I'm a teacher so that if I perhaps ask you to stand up at some point during this talk. I ask you to answer a math question, you are forewarned. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my name is Mark Rogers, and I am a 2007 BHP graduate. And that, taken at the tender age of 21 in Los Angeles, uh, Kyle mentioned that we uh, competed in case competitions, and that's something that is afforded to BHP students. You can go to get free plane tickets and free hotels. Students and go to different cities and then they give you a business problem and they say fix it and provide us with a solution in 24 hours. And then you don't sleep for 24 hours and then you do it and then hopefully you win. And sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do and then they take a picture. So that's us. Uh, I moved to London to go trade debt for Morgan Stanley immediately after college. And uh, so that's me with the ticker in Canary Wharf, uh, which is London's financial district. And it's surrounded by waterways, so people say it's where Wall Street meets Venice. Sounds nice. It's, it's, it's a little, you know, it's kind of sad because people are leaving at the end of the day and they're like, oh, going out. Coming from work, and so you're crossing these waterways, but there aren't any people in those like pontoon boats, like singing Italian songs. It's it's just people going to work. So it's it was fun, but um, after that, I moved back to the states and got my teaching certification, and uh, now I teach theory of knowledge and calculus at a charter school north of Boston here in, uh, in Round Rock. That's me with Jeffrey Tambor at last year's South by Southwest EDU conference. So if you are fans of arrested development, this may look familiar. Then I got married <laughs> to my lovely wife. Hook of money. <laughs> She's also a UT graduate, so also be forewarned you might fall in love with somebody here at school and get married. And then, of course, this might happen. All right, that's kind of hard to see. Wow, uh, those are little baby feet. I'm so excited. We were so excited. So we're expecting our first child in July. And now you know a, a little bit more about me. Uh, and bear with me just a second. Okay. When your hands are sweating, these iPhones are the worst because it won't read your fingerprints and then you can't access your notes. So uh, to all the parents out there, paper sometimes is better. I'm learning, learning that right now. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm honored to, to speak in front of you today. And it's mainly because I know, I know you. 
I, I, I know I know a lot about you actually. If you received a, a BHP admits, it means that you're driven, that your effort is outstanding, that you maximize your opportunities, and uh, most importantly though, you see your future potential, and you want to equalize that with your current reality. Here's your potential, and you're only like, you know what? I need to get there, and you're trying to equalize all the time. And by by that, you know, I, I, I know that this is also true, not to psychoanalyze you, but you are always seeing the horizon and saying, what's next for me? Where am I going? And how can I improve? And that constant view into the future can sometimes, can sometimes take away from the present. So uh, here's, here's, here comes one of those times. Can all of the high school seniors please stand up? Take 25 seconds here. Look around. Bask in a small moment of reflection. Thank you very much for that. It's about 25 seconds. You say 25 seconds, that seems oddly specific, Mark. Well, I've experimented with actually several different time frames, and I found that 25 seconds is enough time to really code that memory. And be like, oh yeah, we stood up and I looked and these could be all, these could be my peers, these could be my friends. Um, but 25 seconds is short enough to, to not appear catatonic. It's like if, you, if you're just standing around for six minutes going like this. People are going to think something's wrong with you, so 25 is good. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that I'm a calculus and theory of knowledge teacher. And can I get a show of hands for people who are currently or have taken a TOK class? IB? All right. All right. So for, for everybody else, theory of knowledge helps us draw connections between content areas and then help organize that and, and understand our past, present, and future. So as a calculus teacher, I realized that seemingly esoteric, uh, psychological, anthropological, and historical contexts exist on the x and y axis. And so what I like to do is take TOK and match it with calculus, and uh, when, when that becomes real, that's when you see me very excited. So I'm going to show you a graph here. This is your life. This is called a rational function. And as the graph curves upward, it approaches this dotted line that you see, and it can't cross it. Anybody know what that line's called? Asymptote. Wow, you are awesome. I knew you were here for a reason. Remember. Cool. So that's an asymptote, and this is a rational function. And this, this graph, you know, is super steep to the right, and then it's increasing in the middle, and then it, it's very flat near there on the left. And this relates to those three questions that we asked earlier. So, what's next? Where am I going? How can I improve? What you're really asking yourself is, how can I accelerate my growth? You're in these seats right now because you don't just want to grow, you want to accelerate your growth to reach your full potential. You want to have your idea of what you want in the future with your potential, and you want to equalize that. So there are actually three distinct zones here on this rational function. We're going to talk about them and how they relate to your life. Here's this first part. I call this the flatline zone. You are bored. You are not challenged. 
Your rate of acceleration is low. You are lethargic. Your development is stunted. We don't want to be here. Like, look how slow that's growing. That's, that's, that's not where we want to be. So we, we go back to the curve and we say, okay, well maybe we want to be on this really steep part. This part, we want to fly up to the moon like Buzz Lightyear. That's called the infinity zone, of course. You say, well, there's something wrong with that too. This is unsustainable, impossible. We cannot divide by zero. This is where we find ourselves from time to time. Look at that. Like, if you wanted to climb that, you, it, would, it would lead to anxiety pro, uh, production. You'd have hyper stress, constant all nighters, deteriorating interpersonal relationships. Due to the enormous tasks ahead of us in the infinity zone, our future is not even visible. We are solely focused on the present. We can't even pick our heads up. We don't want to be here either. So we go back. We say, what about this middle bit? This middle bit is called the growth acceleration zone. This is the sustainable, high growth region where we thrive. We are excited. We are challenged. We are rapidly growing our skill sets, and that enables us to tackle any opportunity. We have energy and are excited about the future. It's the best of the three zones, but um, I don't know if there's, I don't know if it's a problem with the projector, but it seems like there's some like pixelation here. So I'm going to actually zoom in one more time uh, into the growth acceleration zone because there's, it doesn't look quite right. All I did was zoom in. I didn't. I guess that's what the, that function looks like. <laughs> what I appreciated so much about my experience here at BHP is the world-class faculty, peers, support staff. They keep you in this growth acceleration zone at all times, and that's hard to do because your your curve is changing. You're growing your skill set. You're meeting new people. So your curve is changing all the time, but they're always there to keep you in this sweet spot. Now, this is a direct result of your BHP professors specifically designing courses to build analytical and interpersonal skills so that they can function across all industries. Do you want to be a fashion designer? Do you want to open up a restaurant in New York City? Do you want to be a model? Or a keyboardist for an award-winning band? Do you want to defend your clients in court? Do you want to write education policy for the United States of America? Do you want to trade securities for an energy firm in New York City. Well, we do that here. And renowned companies around the world, they know that we do that here. Every single one of those people is a BHP alum. And sometimes it's just a few letters that fill us with helium and allow us to rise a little bit further, just a few letters, like MD, like JD, like PhD, like BHP. <laughs> Beyond BHP, you'll find that the McCombs Business School and the University of Texas at Austin have so many opportunities to help you achieve that growth in college. So I joined the Freshman Business Association my first year, and that shrinks a 4,500 person Macomb School of Business down to a hundred, a couple hundred of your, your fellow, your uh, fellow freshmen, and, and that just helps shrink the school so that you have people to talk to. I was a part of the Undergraduate Business Council and created and helped host Parents' Day in April. So every April, your parents can get, get to come down to school again and see you. We could do this all over again. 
And then I moved beyond McCombs by joining the Texas Blazers, and that's an organization uh, comprised of leaders across all of UT's organizations. And meeting diverse groups of people at UT helped me grow, but I knew that the whole point of going to college was to make a difference afterward. So what does BHP do for you after you graduate? Your, your curve, like I said, continues to bend and shift after college. But these experiences at BHP will keep you firmly entrenched in that growth acceleration zone. When I worked for two years at Morgan Stanley, I found out that that wasn't my calling. Education was my calling. That was a big risk to shift. But being in BHP helped me to make that shift. When my friend Webb Stevens graduated from BHP, and knew that his love for the outdoors needed to be incorporated into his curve, he graduated a semester early so that he could climb Mount Kilimanjaro. When my friend Shauna Crittenden graduated from BHP, she knew that further education was what she needed, so she went and earned her graduate degree from Harvard Business School. When my friend Brian Crittenden graduated from BHP, he knew his growth curve would mean leaving his native Texas to work in real estate finance in New York City. But more importantly, he also knew that Shauna and he could grow better together, so they made a lifelong pledge to support each other for the next 80 years or so. They both worked in the BHP staff, as, so that's, that's like the, the highlight love story of the last five years in the BHP office. These are their stories. You know my story now. I don't know your story. But I'd like to be there and help you as you write your story. My contact information is here. We'll work together to accelerate your growth. The network of BHP alumni is at your fingertips as well. We all share an affection and admiration for the people that continue to make BHP strong. So talk to us. We're not scary people. We were sitting there. We are invested in, invested in accelerating your growth, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.